Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to make a card with a new set of dies to me. I had a, a shipment the other day from Gummy Pan and one of the things I chose were these cone flowers. So I just thought I'd make a, a vase of them, Gummy Pan vase. And what I've done, I've cut out two, well, two for each one, if you know what I mean. So that's a double layer for this flower. And I've cut, and I've actually got two of those. Uh, so I've got two of each, double layers in each. But I have cut another set of heads because I want to make the petals an extra layer um, from the centres and the stems so that they do stick out a bit more, get a bit more uh, perspective or whatever. So um, the colours I've chosen um, for the middles are... Um, Vintage Walnut and Hazelnut Truffle. For the petals, I've chosen Indian Saffron and Bright Sunflower. And for the stems, I'm just going to use Desert Sage, says she. She may modify as things go along, as is my wont, but you know, we'll, we'll see how we go. So I've got this, this little vase, and this is the base layer. I thought I would use, I found this bit of smooshing in my drawer of scraps and things. So I thought I'd cut one of those and then maybe do something with it. I don't know, we'll see. So that's the only thing I actually haven't cut for the card. I'll, I'll just cut one of those. I just wanted you to see what it was to start with really. So I'll just cut one of those out. Um, and for the front, I, I'm not sure where I got this from, this this um, sort of decally die. Um, I've got s several sets of, of decally dies from over the over the years. So there's there's my vase that's going to go on there, and I may well put shading and all that kind of stuff on it. Wh whatever we'll see. But I've got a five by seven card and a five by seven seven panel, out of which I thought I would cut this decally um, oval and have the vase of flowers in the middle. But for a backdrop, I found this cover plate which is just um like stitched lines so i'll cut that from a separate piece of card because i don't want to cut into the card base itself so i'll just see how that goes on and I, I'm, some of the, the stuff i do scroll the name on the back so that i don't forget but other times i forget and sometimes the the um the sharpie writing does come off the metal so that's another reason why I tend to forget. It's my excuse anyway, I'm going to stick to it, we'll see. So, let's have a look at this. That's pretty, isn't it? So I thought that, that could go behind the aperture. Looks like I didn't have enough pressure to cut all the way around. It's because it was absolutely sideways on. It's always better if, you, if you're putting something with a straight edge like this through a die cutting machine, and rather than it going straight through the rollers like this, if it's slightly on an angle, it doesn't have that hurdle to get over. It just goes over a point. It's like going up a ramp, really. So I'll just cut that out and we'll sort that out in a mo. Okay, now I can cut out my, I think I'll take this down as well to make sure it stays where I put it, my decal oval. Here's a bit of tape. Okay. It's kind of difficult to think of um, techniques or tips or whatever for every single video, but I just kind of say what I'm doing. And if you didn't know about it, that's great. And if you think, oh, crikey, I've known that since I was five, then, well, that's fine too. But, you know, if somebody gets something from it, that's, that's all to the good. Right, here's my oval decal, or decal oval, should I say. That's coming out of there. That is going to go over that, like this. And then my vase of flowers is going to go over that. So let's just pop those out of the way for the minute. That'll come in handy for something else, won't it? Because like both the aperture and the thing itself look good. Okay, onto the magnet sheet at the back. Now, my flowers. I'll get a something to do a bit of colouring on. Here we go. Um, I'm going to colour these before I add the extra petals because 
I will then be able to go over the bit that, you know, uh, where the two join at, without worrying about transitions or whatever. So let's do the tops. Keep it round. Just doing round the edges, sort of the outside of the, the middles. And then I'll do the lighter shade right in the centre kind of thing. Yes, I really want to come over a little bit, don't I? So that I make sure I get the, the coverage I need. I don't know if I'll use all of these. I don't know if there's going to be that much space in the, in the vase. We'll see. Right, let's put the other colour on the top. I don't know if you can see this, but the, the transition is really quite, quite subtle. It's quite nice. It makes me happy. <laughs> I need to do that down a little bit there. Okay. Go down a bit more. There we go. All right, now we'll do the green for the stems. And I can clean off this mat from the alcohol inks with some essential oils. Not only does it smell nice, but it gets rid of all the, all the color from my mat. See, I'm not bothering about going over these petals because I'm going to cover them up with, with those. Interesting colour green, isn't it? Um, am I going to modify that slightly? Where's my... Oh, maybe not, perhaps leave it. Okay, right, now for my flowers, and I'm going to colour them before I cut them off because I can hang on to the bits I'm going to cut off while I'm doing the colouring. So, the deeper of the two shades, I'm going to put, I'll show you them, oops, there's one, and there's the other. So, I'm going to use the deeper of the two shades near to the top. So, let's just colour all of these. I mean, I say, I don't know if I'm going to use them all, just that bit there. The more random that you do it, the, the more natural it actually looks. Just want to make sure I go over the, the join, the transition from one section of the flower to the other. Okay, and I will go over the rest of the petals with this other colour. trying to be careful to avoid touching other bits of colour on the mat because my marker will pick those colours up. One more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Right, the, the, the transition between the two shades is quite subtle, but I rather like it. Right, now I'll cut these bits apart so I've got to cut off the stem and I've got to cut off the top bit this is why I wanted to come down a little bit with the the brown of the center of the the flower so that is that one and I think I'll stick it on straight away because otherwise, knowing me, I will lose it. Right. 
this is just going on the petals says she dabbing a bit on the middle okay one and another one cut off the petal the stem rather and cut off the center of the flower. I am just kind of joining up the, em the emboss lines in the actual die cut itself this one is this one I believe so I've got some glue on this Two, they're nice, aren't they? Another one. So these three are going to be exactly the same. So I'll just um, cut those, add them to the flowers and put them with the finished ones. There. That's all the flowers done. Now, if you if you see me wipe this off with a wet with a wet wipe, a baby wipe, a lot of these marks will remain. But a little bit of uh, essential oil will get off. You see? See that? Doesn't want to come. Some of it's coming off. You can see there. But I'll just tip back into the bin. If I use some essential oil, which is here, just put a few drops on. This one is bergamot and it smells lovely. Not expensive. I think I got it on Amazon actually. But if you've got a work surface that you don't want this on from alcohol inks, just simply do this. And away it goes. There we go. It's a really good cleaner. I use it to clean my die cutting machines where they get a bit grubby with there's bits of glue I've got and, and, and fragments of uh, paper dust have clung to it. So it's a really, really good notion. Now, I would like to do something with this chap. Oh, he's a bit far removed, isn't he, at the moment, colour wise? Let's see if we can add a bit of something to uh, tone him down a bit. I was thinking it was going to go with the colours I'd chosen, but I don't know if it will. However, with the um, tw the shimmer in there, that's going to remain. So it's just a question of adding a bit more. Let's do it over all of it now. I'll do a bit of the darker one as well. Oh, wrong end. There we go. Does that look like? Can't pick it up. My lovely friend Deb gave me some of these. She had two. I think that's going to be a better colour. Okay. Now, next thing I want to do is just add a little bit of shape to these chaps and then we can pop them in the vase and put the vase on. Do I like that? Let's have a look. Um, I'm just wondering if I need some kind of design on it. Um, I don't know that I do like that actually. Let me just play again. Let me play once more. Anything like a started now, does it? 
actually just let's go over it just, just the whole thing i was thinking that was going to be a highlight but it just looks like a mistake it's still shimmering because of the um of the stuff underneath um just wondering if i just put a, a stamp over it or just a bit of Bit of texture or something like that. Let me just see. What have we got here? A few various textured things. Let's try this one. Um, uh, what am I going to do? Perhaps I'll just cut another one and just see what. Let's I'll try. Um, Let me just dry this off a moment. I'm just going to try stamping on it. <laughs> oh dear, the things I do. Right. This is just a general little swirly, splotty, I don't know what stamp. Here I've got some copper load of that embossing powder, copper embossing powder. So let's just put a bit of this on and see what we think. It might not work at all. Okay. Oh, that looks interesting. Let's just see. The background's got shimmer, as I was saying, because of the the shimmer that was on the paper to start with. Let's see. Here we go. Now that, that is a more interesting vase, isn't it? Oh my word, yes. Isn't that lovely? Gosh, and it goes well with the colour too. I surprise myself sometimes, I have to say. Just let me just see if that bit's all dried up. Okay, that's perfect. Oh, I'm, I'm pleased with that. Oh dear. Oh, so I do surprise myself. Here we go. Let's have some shaping tools and we'll just make these a bit more rounded so they look more like what they're supposed to look like. Yep. Give the tip a bit of a that's better. This mat is by McGill. The, this embossing tool is by McGill, but there's lots and lots of different makes that you can get for these. Absolutely loads. And I just want to give this vase the semblance of roundness. That's better, isn't it? Oh, it's a pretty one. Look at it. Now, I don't know how many of these things we're going to fit in, but we'll just, we'll just see. Give that a bit round there. And the tip. There we go. Let's just see. There we are. I don't know if I will use all of these, we'll see. This, by the way, this set of background stamps is another one of the Glo Global Land ones. So, um, they're not quite what I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be bigger than that. But, you know, if I'd read the, the dimensions, I would have known. But I just like them nevertheless. And I think for things like this, they're absolutely brilliant. Look at that. That looks gorgeous, doesn't it? That looks like an artisanal type vase. Yeah, I'm really pleased. 
<laughs> Lots of people say to me when they're looking at my videos, they say, I thought that looked a hot mess, but it worked out all right in the end. Well, I think the hot, I don't, we don't use that expression in this country, hot mess, but I kind of know what you mean. <laughs> it does look a hot mess. Right, now then, let's just sort this lot out. Here's my background piece. I just have to cut this, as I say, because I, it had to go in straight through my um, die cutting machine and it didn't cut all the way, but that's fine. I may have to cut a bit off anyway. It might be a bit wide. I'm not really sure. We will see. See how wide it is. Well, it just fits, doesn't it? Except that's the wrong way. Just fits. Okay, so next job is some um, foam tape around the inside of this. And then we can put the backing onto it as well. So let's put this down here. Now, I need to assemble this little, this little lot. Let's just put some sticky on the back to start with. This is to grab the stems as I put them inside the bars. So, they can go fairly high. Okay. The higher they go, the more I can fit in. It's not the same as that one. I think that will do. Keep it inside the vase. Now, foam tape down the middle. Could have put a broader one on, couldn't I? Okay. I think we'll put some little um, square pads underneath there. So where do we want to put it? Right at the bottom? I can move those later, can't I? Right, let's pop this in. Little glue on the edges. Okay. Okay, now if I use some of these, I can spread these out a little bit, give them a bit of, you know, bend the stem slightly and then they'll stick where I put them. So let me use a pokey tool. I don't 
take one of these, take off the back. Oops. Come on. There we go. Put it behind one. Okay. Let's get another one. Perhaps I'll take the top off first. Then, oops. Then pick it up. Okay. Put it behind and down. Take the top off first. Why didn't I think of this before? Because I'm old, I suspect. There we go. Oh, that one hasn't got its back off, has it? Didn't take its back off. There we go. That's better. Now, I think it needs a sentiment. And I don't know what. So I'll think about the sentiment. And then I can pop it. Somewhere. Maybe. Well, I can't just do it straight away. I'm, I'm going to have to have a little cogitate about it. So, as ever, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you for subscribing. Do remember to just check now again if you don't mind because YouTube in its uh, wisdom decides to unsubscribe some people be un unbeknownst to them. So, if you could check, that would be absolutely wonderful. So have a lovely day and I'll see you next time.